In this video, we're going to talk about the Daikonal Thermo, which is an air to water heat pump. And I'm going to explain why this is a revolutionary technology that actually isn't all that new. The truth is with most other technology, a lot of the heat pump technology I'm going to be discussing in this video is actually already widely being used in Europe. And some of these products will be coming available more widely and used in the United States very soon. And before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home and subscribing to the channel is a free way that you can support the channel and it is much appreciated. And the air to water heat pump we are talking about today is actually in response to an inquiry I made to our parts house a while ago because I was actually interested and getting this product for myself, and that is the Daikin Altherma. Now, if you're not familiar with what a heat pump is, it is basically an air conditioner with a reversing valve, but this product is an air to water heat pump, which means that it can actually heat water for a variety of applications. And because it can heat water, this means that it can also cool water. And the reason that this is a revolutionary piece of technology is we have a lot of customers in Colorado that have solar panels, but also have radiant heat or radiant in-floor heat. And therefore they use a boiler currently as well, and they're unable to make the switch to a heat pump for this reason because they still need a boiler for their hot water and their space heating. However, with this product, we are able to heat water temps warm enough for radiant floors as well as traditional baseboards, which means that you can replace your boiler with a heat pump system instead. Now, this means that this system can tie into either a hydronic air handler that does heating and cooling, but it can also tie into your domestic hot water. So literally with one piece of technology, you are able to get hot water for your home, in-floor radiant heat, as well as the ability to connect to a forced air hydronics air handler that provides both heating or cooling through a ducted application as well. Now the biggest area where this is an absolute game changer is obviously going to be in the hot water space because for our customers that have had boilers before that didn't have a heat pump option, now suddenly have one. Now part of the reason that these are a great piece of technology is that they also have higher efficiency ratings at lower temperatures than some of their air source counterparts. And right now what I'm going to do is a deep dive onto some of the specifications on this unit. And we're going to be talking specifically about the COP or co coefficient of performance. And if you're not familiar with a COP or, or coefficient of performance and what that means, we explain that in another video that I'll make sure to link at the end of this video. But in a nutshell, the higher the number, the more efficient it is. And it is essentially just a ratio of how efficient it is by comparison with its electric counterpart. So for example, if you have a coefficient of three, that means that the heat pump is three times as efficient as its electric heater counterpart, like a space heater, for example. So now that you have a basic understanding, let's dive into the numbers. Now, the unit I'm reviewing right now is the low temperature split wall mount unit, and it is the Altherma 3. This particular model goes up to eight kilowatts in capacity, which is actually kind of small, honestly. However, these are designed to be tied into typically with a solar system or a thermal collector, meaning that there's a solar water loop on your roof that ties in with this. Now, there's also an option that will go up to 16 kilowatts, which is five tons. But one thing I do want to point out is that there is a monoblock version, which I'll explain what a monoblock system is later. But that also goes up to 16 kilowatts as well, which is basically the same as a five ton system. So if you're in a larger home, that's probably going to be a better option. But the bottom line is you'll have to get a heat load calculation done on your home to make sure that you're sizing it properly. But the bottom line, is that it looks like they have a range of products available that will meet your needs. And we don't typically install these in Colorado as much because although you get a lot of heat from this type of application, the downside is that unless you have a big load to dump that heat into like a pool or a hot tub, then oftentimes the heat from the solar heater gets wasted. And please take that comment with a grain of salt because that's just what I found in my preliminary investigations. I've never personally installed these types of units, meaning the solar hot water heaters. So if you disagree, please let me know what you think in the comment section below, because that's just what I've been told by some of the solar hot water contractors that we've talked to and interviewed about some of these products. But in this application, it might be a little bit different because you're only having a couple of solar panels collecting some additional heat to supplement the load of this particular unit. But nonetheless, at eight kilowatts,
kilowatt. It's basically almost a two and a half ton unit. Now this will also tie into a supplemental storage tank. So that way when it's not being used for heating or cooling, it can also heat water that is in that hot water tank to supplement during times of peak demand for both heating and hot water consumption. So this means that you're not relying on the unit necessarily on an on-demand basis, but you have a buffer tank that is full of hot water ready for when you need it. Now the COP on these units range between 3.3 for a water at an outlet temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees Celsius and a COP of 4.5 at a 95 degree water temperature. And that's a little on the cold end. Most people set their hot water temperatures around 120 or 130, but I'm not super familiar with this application. So this might have to do with the fact that it also ties into a solar panel or it has the ability to potentially, because it has the ability to uh, tie into a solar panel uh, if you're wanting solar hot water. But once I get my hands on one, I will definitely do an in-person review so you can see it in action and I can tell you my you know further thoughts. But in addition to the thermal storage tanks that offer solar support, those come in two sizes. One is 300 liters, one is 500 liters. So basically 80 gallons or 130 gallons, uh, which is massive. On the In the smaller domestic hot water tanks come in a 150 up to 300, which is pretty standard. That's like a 40 gallon all the way up to an 80 gallon tank. And all in all, I'm very excited to install one of these and see how they perform because it's a very cool technology to be able to heat your hot water and your radiant uh, floor heating with a heat pump and have air conditioning and tie it in with a solar system, uh, you're able to be completely off the grid and not have to pay for expensive propane. You do still have to pay for the infrastructure like solar panels if you're trying to go green, but even if you're running this connected to the grid, it's still going to be more efficient than electric heat and probably about the same cost to operate compared with natural gas. And I'm definitely guessing uh, there based on the efficiency ratings that we just went through. But the bottom line is that it's going to be nice to have these as an option for our customers. And I'm already looking forward to all the unique applications that we are going to be able to utilize these in. Now the monoblock is a little bit different and as I mentioned the monoblock heat pumps go up to 16 kilowatts capacity which is technically 4.6 tons which we can just call it five tons for simplicity's sake and what's nice about the monoblock systems is that the refrigerant is all contained outside and what this means is that rather than running refrigerant lines inside your home this will actually just be hydronic plumbing lines that are connected to your hydronic air handlers or your hydronic loops like your in-floor radio radiant heat, as well as a similar storage tank, like I just mentioned earlier, that's an indirect fired water heater that's going to store your water for you for your domestic hot water purposes. And if you're curious about when uh, this should be coming to North America, there's a few other manufacturers that are already available, and these products are made by companies like Entertech. However, the Daikin products I just went through should be here by Q4 of 2024, is my understanding. And my guess is that they will definitely qualify for a lot of the similar tax credits and rebates that are out there because of their efficiency ratings. They do meet the, the requirements for these tax credits and rebates in most municipalities, but as they come available and once I get my hands on one, you can bet I'll be reviewing them more in depth further and I will be keeping you up to date on everything you need to know. And if you enjoyed the content uh, in this video, please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Is this something you are considering putting in your home? I'm always curious to hear uh, what projects that people are working on. So please post a comment below and let us know what you think and what brought you to the channel. And on that note, we put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. So if you've enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. It's a free way that you can support the channel and it is much appreciated. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service so you can stay up to date when we start servicing your metro. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now talking about efficiency ratings as well as another video that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we'll catch you on the next episode.